What's up guys, I'm Olivia. And I'm Kyle. And we're driving and vibing. Today we're talking to Less Junk, More Journey about RV living with a family, boondocking, and some of their strategies for YouTube, so stay tuned. Welcome back to our channel everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. If it's your first time here, we would love for you to subscribe and join the Vibe Tribe. So we are so thrilled today to be here with Nathan and Marissa from Less Junk More Journey. How's it going y'all? It's good. good. It's great. Sweet. So yeah, we've been in the desert now for about a week here in Yuma, hanging out with the Epic Nomad movie crew and the Escapers crew. So just first and foremost, how have you been enjoying it out here in the desert? <laughs> It's good. We haven't done desert since Moab, maybe like mm -hmm. six or eight months ago. So everything's dusty, um, <laughs> but you're getting a ton of sun for solar. Yeah. And the it's, view's it's, it's, incredible. The view's incredible. Best of all, it's, it's warm. So yes. Yeah. I'm all about not complaining at all. When the rest of the country is so cold, it is yes. nice to be I here know. in the desert. <laughs> Uh, so I really want to dive into like some RV living things with you guys and Airstream life. But before we get into that, can you just let our viewers know what the heck inspired you to do RV life in general? It all started really when we had our daughter. Mm. Um, so we wanted to spend more time as a family and we had trouble having her. And so um, we thought, man, we just want more time as a family. So we started researching downsizing. That was our original thought. And then we saw a video of this lifestyle mm -hmm. and thought, okay, yeah, let's just put our house on wheels. This is for downsizing and travel and make more memories of a family together. And it's kind of what sparked it. Yeah. It's been good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That like is awesome because I, we hear a lot of people say, I have a family and we see that as a challenge to yeah, hit the road. It's an excuse not yeah, to do that. Yeah. But, but I love that. It was your motivation. So that's really cool to have experiences together as a family because I think like kids I've met on the road, they are so like well-rounded and like cultured and like I have conversations with them like they're adults <laughs> yeah. because they are just exposed to so many things mm -hmm. that we don't get like in a typical envi environment stationary. Mm -hmm. This is really all she knows. We made the decision when she was five weeks old, so she doesn't really know much else. She so, meets kids in suburban areas yeah. and she's like, let's go to their RV. And we're <laughs> yeah. like, not, not everybody lives in an yeah, RV. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. But she's really social. She's good at making friends because she's always had to. It's always changing. Mm -hmm. So she can't be shy. Mm -hmm. She has to go up and just get right to it and she does really great with that. That's awesome. So uh, you said at five weeks is when you made that decision. Mm -hmm. that, that was when you decided to do RV life or when you actually hit the road? That's about, when we made the decision. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah it took us um, close to a year before we actually got in an RV full time. Mm -hmm. We did buy a travel trailer while we were in our house to try it out because we'd never done anything <laughs> in an RV before. We never like, Maybe we should try it. We never <laughs> maybe we should try this at least once before we sell everything. Yeah. Uh, so we tried out the travel trailer, which it was too small for us at the time, mm -hmm. but at least we learned that, hey, we do, we like this lifestyle. Mm -hmm. We could do this. Yeah. yeah. Good to learn the ropes and kind yeah. of ease into mm -hmm. the transition. We're in that same boat. We never had an RV trip in our life until we hit the road and we only took one practice run so we did it was <laughs> yeah just like yeah. 15 <laughs> miles away maybe our 15 minutes away from like our hometown yeah. and we forgot our pillows and like random things like that but we we're like ah we we're close enough <laughs> we're ready to hit the road yeah. so let's talk about that you said the trailer travel trailer wasn't big enough and uh, I know a few years ago I guess you were in a class A mm -hmm. But then you decided to downsize to this airstream, so it seems like yeah, right. uh, it took a little while to figure out what works for you guys. Yeah. Can you give us some insight on that? I call us the three little bears of camping mm -hmm. because we've we've downsized because we got that travel trailer that was too small, and we tried camping in that, and we thought, okay, this isn't going to work. So then we went way too big. Mm -hmm. We got a forty-three foot fifth wheel because we thought we were going from a house. We needed something large, and then we quick quickly realized that that's a nightmare having to move as frequently as we move so then we decided to get this is sounding really bad yeah the 40 foot uh, <laughs> like how long you been on the road yeah <laughs> <laughs> the 40 foot motor home and we love that and it's mm -hmm. very convenient and we knew going into it that we thought space was more important than flexibility but once we started living the lifestyle over the last year in that motor home we thought no we want the flexibility of parking state national mm -hmm. parks or boondock more and then that's when we made the transition yeah so i've been watching y'all's channel for a while and uh years ago it does seem like uh you were staying at campgrounds more mm -hmm. and I, it, either it's just because i'm more, more attracted to it or it might be true that it seems like you've done a lot more boondocking lately 
Is that the way it has been? We have. Yeah. I think the smaller you get, the easier it is. Now, some places like where we're at right now in the desert, it's not a big deal. You see 40 mm -hmm. footers, 43, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, the, we just came from Joshua Tree, for instance. Mm -hmm. If you're over 30 feet and try to camp in the northern part of Joshua Tree, mm -hmm. which is where you want to be, National Park, like it's really hard to do it in a 35, 40 foot ring. Yeah. Um, and so we kind of, you know, we just, we just saw that pattern over time that we didn't realize starting off. And I think it took us time to adjust. I think if right. we'd gone straight from a house to a 30 foot travel trailer with our kid, um, it might have been too much too fast. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not to say we made wrong decisions. I think we made the right decision on where we're at. But yeah. as a family, you know, if it's a couple and, and you're retiring, and I don't think your situation will change as much. But with mm -hmm. a family, I think the dynamic, you know, can change a lot. Yeah, and it's a, a learning process, constantly a learning process. And we're still figuring out what it is we want and need mm -hmm. as well. And I think uh, having that flexibility to change and know that, you know, something doesn't really suit you anymore and you're ready for like this next journey or next phase and not being afraid to try that and say, you know what, this isn't actually what we wanted because most people are really nervous about their first rig. And I'm like, chances are it's not yeah. going to be your last rig either because you have to get out here and live it to really know what your, your needs are and your priorities are in a rig and space. And sometimes that just changes too. And there's not a perfect RV. You just yeah. have to kind of find mm -hmm. what, what you're saying, what fits for you. And that can change over time. So Definitely. I think most people are just too stressed out about it, it has to be perfect. Mm -hmm. But it's, there's give and take. You yes. just have to pick what works best for your situation. Definitely. And I love the uh, year end video you made about some of your favorite campgrounds or free campsites. Mm -hmm. Actually, we'll link that above, guys, <laughs> so you can check that out. But uh, like the places you went, resonated with us because we went to a lot of those like the Teton free camping and mm -hmm. then out at Badlands uh, but those are out in the middle of nowhere like in Badlands how does having a daughter like take like play into that does she love playing out in nature in these huge spaces she does yeah. she does we don't run into as many people and families mm -hmm. in those situations but man you get that girl a stick you get her <laughs> out here in the desert I mean it's a giant sandbox I mean yeah. she's got tons of sand so she's not clean <laughs> which is rough when you can't you know you're you're you also have a washer and dryer. Water. You know, washer and dryer. You don't have as much water, but she yeah. loves, loves, loves that awesome. environment. And I think most kids, by nature, love that. I think, mm -hmm. and she would too if we didn't watch it. But they just over time become kind of, and adults can too, but become kind of addicted to screens. Oh yeah. So I think kids love that kind of thing. You just might have to remind them <laughs> that it's really good and healthy to be creative with yeah. what's around you. Did you see any of those bighorn sheep out there in the Badlands? Yes. <laughs> so Is that awesome. what they were? We, so. could, we, yeah. never, <laughs> we never, we got it wrong so many times. We, and we had heard multiple times they were this or that yeah. and we never pinpointed it. So we just said wild bobs. Yeah, yeah, they kind of covered it. <laughs> but yeah, nice. yeah, tons of them oh, loved it. That yeah. was a beautiful spot. So I'm curious if there were any misconceptions you had before you hit the road and then the reality of it once you hit the road. Was there anything that you were like afraid of or unsure about that ended up being completely different than you expected? I think it took us a while to get out of vacation mode. We didn't really plan that. And that sounded yeah. like, oh, you poor thing, vacation mode. But, yeah. but I mean, um, like what I mean by that is we were moving from place to place super fast, mm -hmm. pushing ourselves super hard, spending buttloads of money yeah. because when you're in an RV and you're constantly moving and seeing things, you're spending a lot of money. And we were gaining weight like crazy. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, like, we're like, oh, new food here, new food yeah, there. Yeah. And here you are, you're, just, you're in vacation mm -hmm. mode and it's tough. It took us three, six months to get out of that. Mm -hmm. um, until we're like, okay, we gotta calm down. This is our life, we're gonna be broke yeah. and overweight. Mm -hmm. and just, we, yeah. we gotta, you know, watch what we're gonna do. And so that, that was a challenge that we didn't anticipate, um, but actually, you know, it was a challenge, I think. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with you guys. We were in vacation mode for like uh, the first three months, spending too much money. And it, it was even a year into it where I realized I wasn't getting enough activity. Mm. I just started running like six months ago. And one of the big things for me that really was swaying me away from not being active was I was worried about water consumption, you know, yeah. and taking showers and stuff like that. Yeah. But I just had to find a way around that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, um, you know, even for that, first year, like you said, we were still moving really, oh, yeah. really fast mm -hmm. at that point, even though we had gotten a little bit better. I mean, we were staying just like a night or two nights at mm -hmm. some places and you can't yeah. really exhausting. explore yeah. anywhere. And it's a lot of energy doing travel days mm -hmm. all the time. So I remember kind of like getting to the end of that first year and being like, I want to just sit still for a <laughs> month and like recover and like regroup and then like go forward with a new game plan because this yeah. isn't sustainable. Yeah. So can you give any families that might want to hit the road 
a piece of advice, like what piece of uh, inspiration would you give them as insight from someone who's been doing it for some years now? I think it's easy to always find a reason maybe not to live this at mm -hmm. the stage you're at. Like with us, we were like, okay, we, we don't need to do this. She's too young. Let's wait till she's mm -hmm. older because we've gotten comments that, well, she won't even remember this. Why are you doing it? And we could have said that too, but we said, you know what? This is still a great part of her development mm -hmm. um, and ours as a family. And so, you know, I think the best time is now if yeah. you can find a way to do it because I think there's always a reason not to do it. Um, so, no matter what age your kids are, uh, mm -hmm. if you can figure out a way to do it, uh, I think you won't regret it. We awesome. asked ourselves that question, will we regret it if we don't go for it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we say, you know what, we got to go for it. Yeah. If it doesn't work out, we'll just go back to our nine to fives, or find a nine to five, <laughs> and, uh, and go from there, you know. Yeah, no I, doubt. I think that's a great piece of advice because uh, if you keep waiting for the perfect timing, you'll never have yeah. it. Mm -hmm. You'll always have one more thing you need to do or make up a reason why it's not the right time yet. So yeah, just getting out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you learn quickly. It's, it's a learning curve for sure, and there are some adjustments, but you really kind of learn the ropes and get in your groove, and then it's just like regular life. People ask us, what do you do all day when you're out boondocking? I'm like, I go shopping, I clean, I cook, I do laundry, I go buy groceries, you know, we go on a hike, you know, it's just our life, but we have a different backyard yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. So I want to switch gears a little bit and get some insight um, what it's like running such a large and successful YouTube channel while also having a family and traveling full time. It, it takes a lot of, I guess you would say self-discipline, because it's hard not mm -hmm. to that separation of life versus work, especially when your life is your job, if that yeah. makes sense, oh, sharing yeah. your life. So that's been really tough for us. It's just like not always having that work mode, but having that, okay, this is family time. This is, and Nathan does a really good job with that. Like he will set his hours to Hensley, our daughter's sleep time. So like when she goes to bed, he works. And then before she gets up in the morning, he works. So then we have family time throughout the day. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we blend it and do that too. And then um, we also, we have a lot of our families in one place in Tennessee, mm -hmm. which is a decent location, I guess. It'd be Texas or probably better, North Texas yeah. or something. <laughs> Anyways, it's not bad. Yeah. At least it's not like the Keys or something. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> so because we have that good location, our families in one place, we mm -hmm. intentionally go back to there and just kind of just shut the camera off oh, for like cool. a month. Yeah. Uh, so like November, December around holidays, we'll just shut it off. Mm -hmm. And we just spend time with family, we regroup and we refresh. We're still working because what we do is we film so much that we've got videos built up um, that we can start editing those videos and yeah. put them out gradually as we get home. That's nice that you put the camera down though. Yeah, well, and time. we need it. I think yeah. you need to. I think it's if you got the camera, recharge. It, yeah, mm -hmm. we get to recharge. Um, so we're still working and we're planning our next year and doing things like that. Mm -hmm. But we're not constantly filming um, because yeah. we got that home base yeah. we go to for that. that. That balance is so important, and I think it's something we struggle with. Even yeah. if we we don't have a family, yeah. you know, we have someone's dogs. here. That would be our kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she just had to do it. She ran off after that. That's cool. <laughs> Classic <laughs> ring and run. Yeah. Everybody she needs does a doorbell. Have somebody watching her. We this is only like... thirty feet. I don't know why they put a doorbell in it. But... <laughs> I didn't even know these had. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So we met up with Maria Russo just a few days ago. We asked them about their YouTube creation and uh, just was wondering what their take on van life and RV life is on YouTube as far as oversaturation. And if there was a new van life or RV lifer trying to get into the YouTube scene, what would you give them as advice? Or do you think it is even oversaturated? I think if I think the days of just saying, hey, I'm in an RV or a van, check me out are gone. Yeah. I, don't th I think it's oversaturated in that sense. So I think if you're going to have a channel, you do have to carve out something specific or special about what you're doing. Um, Heath and Alyssa Padgett, for instance, they carved out the entrepreneurial market with mm -hmm. what they're doing. Um, you know, so there, there might still be niches you can carve out with what where you are and what you are. So you really have to know an audience and maybe start small, which stinks because mm -hmm. you're not going to grow as fast without, but you've got to start small and then branch out from there. Yeah. Um, and that, we always ask the question, you know, why would someone, if, if there's all these videos out there, all these content creators, um, not that I want them to stop watching somebody else, but what am I doing different that's different enough that they would stop watching them or watch me in addition to what they're doing? Yeah. If what you're doing is similar enough to everybody else's stuff anyways, then you're just not going to be able to break through. So yeah. it just takes some creativity. It's not yeah. as easy as it used to be. But everybody has a, a different walk of life. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's what I love is there's a different voice. So you can't say, you know, this is already being done because they might have a different area of their life yeah. that is different and they can share. And so that's what I love about this lifestyle is there's not everybody fits in a round hole kind mm -hmm. of lifestyle. I mean, everybody yeah. is here for different reasons. They're living this lifestyle 
looking for something different, mm -hmm. but we all have that common interest. Sure. Yes, definitely. Was there a point at your, whenever you were still a smaller YouTube channel, was there a point where you saw growth kick in based on something you did, or was it just pretty organic the whole time up? Um, so I guess, I guess to pre preface the answer to that, mm -hmm. um, we didn't want to do this to start with. We yeah. were introverts, uh -huh. so we were just yeah. filming for friends and family just mm -hmm. to sort of show our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And then it started to pick up and a couple of videos did pretty well. We asked Tom Marissa, I said, well, I would enjoy doing something like this if it works out. And yeah. so we started, we said for six months, let's just give it, we gave it a lot of time, um, 20, 40, 60 hours a week probably, you know, mm -hmm. making nothing. We didn't do ads on our videos the first six months. Oh, wow. Um, so we didn't make any money the first mm -hmm. six months. At the end of that six months, we saw a pretty good amount of traction. And so at that point, to answer your question, um, I said, I'm going to do a video every day. So I did a video every day for three, it was like, Almost six months. Almost six months wow. I did a video. Every day, day. seven days a week. Oh yeah, oh, oh my gosh. It was, it was rough, because yeah. it takes three to five hours for me to edit, mm -hmm. just edit a video, you know. Yeah. Um, and so we did a lot of videos for that stretch. Yeah. And during that video is when YouTube started rewarding us and people started seeing us more often. And that I'm not saying that will always work, it just depends on where yeah. you're at and what things are going on. But for us, I think that's when it really started. Um, well, people like consistency. Mm -hmm. So if they feel like they can go and watch something every day, then they're always checking back in so if you have too much of a gap then it's almost like they forget to check yeah. or you know you they yeah. kind of lose sight so not saying you have to do it every single day but I think that's where you see your growth is because people remember you and they're like oh they, they always know you're gonna be there yeah. so we've just found that being uh, consistent and regular with our videos and posting the same times has been good for us. And we're moving fast. I mean, you can't yeah. just say, oh, I'm gonna do one every day, and like today you show you know yourself cutting a tomato, and tomorrow you're <laughs> yeah. a rock. I mean, so it's, it's gotta be good stuff. If yeah. you're not moving around enough, we were moving every two to three days at that yeah. point, and we had new places, new stuff going on all the time. I think that's um, the advantage of RV life, is that if you are moving, the content is there for you to grab, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that is an advantage, but it is, yeah. mm -hmm. I don't want to hold up any more of y'all's day. <laughs> <laughs> I do thank you guys so much for joining us, because we love watching your channel, and mm -hmm. it's so nice to meet you guys in person. Yes. Yeah, it's been great getting to know you guys better and thank you for inviting us into your home it is so cute in here guys <laughs> i wish you could see this i walked in and i was like oh my gosh i have so many ideas <laughs> well thank you yeah. guys thank I appreciate you. it it's great to meet you, to meet you. Sweet. and i'm sure y'all all know let's drug more journey but just in case you don't we'll put all those links below so go check them out but thanks again for watching guys and we'll see y'all next time bye guys see ya